The future of American high-speed rail might not begin on the coast, but in the Midwest. Right now, a single rail corridor between Chicago and St. Louis is quietly testing that idea. What if traveling between these two cities didn't mean traffic jams or airport security lines, but a fast, frequent train instead? In the heart of the Midwest, a rail line first laid down in the 1800s is becoming America's most serious real-world experiment with high-speed rail. From 79-mile-per-hour diesel trains battling freight traffic, to Siemens chargers racing at 110 miles per hour, and beyond that, a bold vision of 220 mile per hour electric trains. The Chicago St. Louis line isn't just another Amtrak route. It may be the answer to a question the United States has struggled with for decades. Can true high speed rail actually work in the Midwest? Let's find out in today's episode with On the Trains. First off, let's rewind to the historical roots of this corridor historical evolution. Picture this. Back in the 19th century, railroads like the Alton Railroad, later part of the Gulf, Mobile, and Ohio, laid down the tracks that still form the backbone today, now operated by Union Pacific and Amtrak. By the 1970s, Amtrak's Lincoln service took over, chugging along at a modest 79 miles per hour on shared tracks riddled with freight trains and at-grade crossings. Rail fans, you might remember those days of EMDF 40PH locos pulling bi-level cars through stops like Springfield and Normal. Scenic, sure, but trips dragged on for over five hours, which didn't exactly pack the seats. Things started heating up in the 1990s when the Federal Railroad Administration tagged this as part of the Chicago Hub Network, thanks to the 1991 Intermodal Surface Transportation Efficiency Act. But real momentum hit in 2009 with the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, pumping over $1.1 billion into Illinois for upgrades. This kicked off the shift to higher speed rail at 110 miles per hour, focusing on better tracks, signals, and safety. A key milestone was the 2003 record of decision from the FRA, FHWA, and Illinois DOT, which picked the existing Amtrak route to minimize environmental hits and rollout changes in phases. That plan included double tracking spots, upgrading crossings, and rolling out advanced train control systems to hit 110 miles per hour south of Dwight, trimming travel times from 5.5 hours down to around 4.5 to 5 hours today. By 2017, the big infrastructure pieces were in place, like continuous welded rail for smoother rides and concrete ties for durability. IDOT's been planning this for over two decades, making the corridor a real testbed for U.S. high-speed rail. Total investments? We're looking at nearly $2 billion from federal, state, and private pockets. Then in 2021, the Illinois High-Speed Rail Commission was born, marking a game-changer. Their mandate? Craft a statewide high-speed plan, starting right here with Chicago to St. Louis. Work really ramped up in 2024, and by 2025, they're deep into studies that could redefine Midwest travel. Quick pause here. If you're a rail fan or just love how infrastructure shapes cities, this is exactly what we do on On The Trains. We're working toward 10,000 subscribers, and your support directly helps us cover more corridors like Chicago-St. Louis. Hit subscribe if you want more deep dives. Now let's see what's running today. Current Operations as of late 2025, the corridor powers Amtrak's Lincoln service with five daily round trips, plus the Texas Eagles extension for that long-haul vibe. Trains kick off from Chicago's iconic Union Station, hitting stops like Joliet, Pontiac, Normal near Illinois State University, Springfield, the state capital, and Alton, before pulling into St. Louis's Gateway Multimodal Transportation Center. End-to-end? -end, about 4.5 to 5 hours on average, with max speeds of 110 miles per hour on roughly 75% of the route, that's around 210 miles from Dwight to Alton, cleared by the FRA back in 2023. The rolling stock is a treat for us gearheads, Siemens SC44. Charger locomotives, diesel electric beasts with 4,400 horsepower and a top speed of 125 miles per hour, hooked up to Venture or Horizon coaches loaded with Wi-Fi, power outlets, and business class comfort. These bad boys accelerate like champs, perfect for the 10 or so stops along the way. Safety's top-notch with positive train control through the interoperable electronic train management system, keeping things collision-free on these mixed passenger freight lines, ridership's booming post-pandemic, hitting over 600,000 passengers in 2024, fueled by cheap fares starting at $25 and on-time rates above 80%. For spotters, there's plenty of action. 
watching chargers blast through rural stretches or across the mighty Mississippi River Bridge. But heads up, urban areas north of Dwight still cap at 79 miles per hour, and there are about 39 at-grade crossings left, down from over 200, all beefed up with four-quadrant gates and detection tech. Diving into the technical side, this corridor's engineering is pure rail nerd heaven. The core is Union Pacific's Chicago subdivision, upgraded to FRA Class 4 standards for that 110 miles per hour passenger punch. Key tweaks from the early plans include 12 miles of double track, 22 miles of freight sidings, and at least one grade-separated crossing. Continuous welded rail cuts down on those bumpy joints, while deeper ballast and concrete ties fight against Illinois' tricky clay soils. Signalings evolve from basic automatic blocks to centralized traffic control with PTC layered on, letting trains adjust speeds on the fly. Curves are gentle with minimum radii around 2,000 feet and up to 6 inches of super elevation for comfy high-speed leans. It's still diesel-powered, but electrification's in the study phase for the future. Environmentally, the 2003 decision addressed stuff like wetland losses, about 0.89 acres, mitigated by creating 1.41 to 1.79 acres of new ones, and stream impacts with erosion controls and revegetation. Total upgrade costs hit around $80 million back in the day, but ongoing tweaks keep it resilient against 20 to 30 daily freight trains hauling coal, grain, and more. Ongoing projects. Speaking of ongoing work, 2025's been busy with targeted boosts. Take the Elwood to Braidwood project, approved by the FRA in December, which adds a second main line track, a maintenance path, and signal upgrades along Union Pacific's line to bust bottlenecks. This $86 million push is part of the broader Chicago Region Environmental and Transportation Efficiency Program, aiming to better separate passenger and freight for smoother runs and fewer delays. Stations are getting love, too. Joliet's new multimodal hub opens in 2026, linking up with Metra, buses, and bike paths. Normal and Springfield have seen fresh platforms, elevators, and even solar-powered features. In May 2025, the Illinois High-Speed Rail Commission reviewed advances on their $2.6 million feasibility study by Quandell Consultants and WSP USA. They're crunching public surveys and route options, highways, existing rails, or greenfields, making this the Midwest's first state-backed high-speed effort. Future visions. Looking ahead, the Commission's vision is thrilling, transforming this into true high-speed rail with dedicated electrified tracks hitting 220 miles per hour, slashing trips to two to three hours. Imagine starting at O'Hare Airport, zipping through downtown Chicago, maybe swinging by Peoria or Champaign-Urbana en route to St. Louis. A big idea is an East St. Louis station next to I-55-64 and Union Pacific tracks, on mostly vacant land, to serve as a multimodal hub with light rail to downtown St. Louis, airports, and beyond. It'd skip the river crossing in Phase 1 for quicker times, handle 25 daily round trips, and set up for extensions to Kansas City. Projections from over 7,000 surveys show millions ditching cars or flights for hourly service, 16 trains each way, daily. They're eyeing governance like a dedicated authority for steady funding through bonds and federal grants like the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. The full report drops in spring 2026, covering costs, estimated $10 to $20 billion, benefits like job creation and lower emissions, and phased builds. This could anchor a massive Midwest network, linking to Minneapolis, Detroit, Indianapolis, and more. Of course, no big project without hurdles. Challenges. Shared tracks with Union Pacific mean freight often gets priority, causing delays. Funding's shaky, past holdups show how inflation and rivals like California's high-speed line can siphon cash. The 2003 plan noted minimal impacts but required wetland and stream fixes. New routes might spark eminent domain fights and habitat concerns. Missouri's not as involved, limiting cross-state teamwork, though advocates are pushing for more. St. Louis's Gateway Station can't handle high-speed volumes yet, so new builds are a must, and public buy-in is crucial. Past efforts stalled without it. Compared to Japan's Shinkansen, we're behind, but this step-by-step -step approach fits America's freight-dominated rails. In wrapping up, the Chicago-St. Louis corridor is a shining example of smart U.S. rail progress, mixing heritage tracks with bold plans. From today's 110-mile-per-hour runs to tomorrow's 220-mile-per-hour dreams, 
It's a story of engineering wins and policy grit that's got us rail fans buzzing. As the 2026 report nears, this could spark a full Midwest renaissance, reconnecting folks and boosting the heartland. What do you think? Ready for high speed in the Midwest? Drop your thoughts in the comments, hit that like button if you're excited, and subscribe to On the Trains for more deep dives into the world of rails. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next track.